Hey everyone, welcome to your first breakthrough where we are going to be talking about object-oriented programming. By the end of this, you should be able to get past some of the principles that maybe you've struggled with before, or if this is your very first time, then you should have a pretty solid foundation. Now, my name is Caleb, and if you're new to my teaching, well, the very first thing you should know is that I like to keep it pretty fun and casual. We'll be going through the exercises together. If we have any issues along the way, we'll figure them out. This means I don't really have everything wrapped up into this nice, perfect, yet sleep-inducing PowerPoint, but I do still take this stuff very seriously, and I want you to get a lot from this video. So before we just start typing away, I want to take a look at object-oriented programming and figure out what its purpose is and why we want to use it. Well, the thing with programming is that we always have to represent data, and there's tons of different ways to represent data. An object is one way to store information. So an object, put simply, is just a collection of related data. Often this data will describe one particular entity. So maybe you're trying to describe a file, or maybe you're trying to describe a person, or a camera, or whatever it might be for your application. It could be a to-do list, a to-do task. Oftentimes we can design our code in such a way to work with different objects, and when we do structure our code in this object-oriented way, it's very scalable because once you know how to work with this particular type of object, you can work with a bunch of them. So when you're working with a bunch of objects, oftentimes they're going to be of a similar pattern. So for example, you might want to represent people in your application. And if you need to represent 20 people, well, each one's gonna be fairly similar. You know, each person has a name, each person can do various things, and there's a lot of similarities between each object. So what we do to program in an object-oriented way is to figure out the different types of objects we're going to need, and we define these as something known as a class. So here's a diagram to illustrate this. We have a class, and using that class, the blueprint, we can create numerous objects. So in the example I just gave, you might have a person class, and if you need to represent three different people, we would then create three different objects. So in our code, the very first thing we do is we create a class to define the structure that we're going to have for these numerous objects. Then what we do is we use this class to create our first object, and this process is known as instantiation. So each time we need a new object, we instantiate the object using the class as a blueprint for how the structure is going to be. So what we're going to be doing is pretty much based off of the previous video, I taught you how to create basic classes and objects, and now I'm going to ask you to do the same thing with one difference, and that is we're actually going to create two classes. One is going to be a position class, and one is going to be a camera class. And one of the attributes for any camera is going to store a position object. So if you're new, that might be a stumbling block, and that's the area of research that I want you to figure out before you just jump to the solution. This down here, this camera type, that is going to be an enum, which is going to be defined inside of the camera class that we're going to use for this camera type. Lastly, we're going to have these log methods, which will print the attributes. And later on, we're gonna talk about a different way to do this using some methods that already exist and method overriding. But for now, we're just going to stick to the log method because it's a good way to work with methods and get some practice. Now, the only thing here with pan, tilt, zoom, I'm assuming these are going to be integers, if, if that matters for you. However, if you are using Python, you don't really have to worry about the type too much when you're defining the class. So go ahead and get started and jump back here when you've completed, and I'm gonna give you the solution. So to begin, I'm going to create the position class, and that's because the camera class is going to need the position class. So there's a bit of a dependency there, so I'm just starting with the, the smallest and then working my way up. So what we do is we say class position, then a colon, and the very first thing I like to do is the init method. So the first parameter in here is self, and then any extra data you want a position object to contain, which we're going to have a pan value, a tilt value, and a zoom value. Put a colon, and then indent, oh, and we also need the def keyword. All right, and then indent, and here's where we're going to assign those parameters to the attributes for these objects. So what we would do is we'd say self.pan, and assign it pan, self.tilt, and assign it tilt, and lastly, self.zoom, assign it zoom. Great. Lastly, for this class, I just want to do a log method. So we say def log and pass in self, 
And all I'm gonna do in this method is just print to the console some data about the any particular position. So let's just print out the pan tilt zoom. You can try to make it pretty using concatenation if you like, or you can use some format string. However, I'm just going to keep it really simple and just print the values. They are, I'm assuming they're all gonna be integers, so I'm gonna cast them to strings. So you do that by passing them to the string constructor here. So we'll say self.pan, and we'll just do that for all of them. So we'll do self.tilt now. And then lastly, self.zoom. Okay, so let's just test out this class, make sure it works. How do we test it? We create an object. So we'll just call it P for position, like so. And then we need to pass in three pieces of data. We'll just go 10, 11, and 12. And now let's log this data by saying p.log. Awesome. Let's run it, see what we get. Running this and we get 10, 11, 12. So it appears that everything is working so far. Next up, I wanna create the camera class. The reason I'm not starting with this camera type enum class is because it's actually going to be defined within the camera class. If you define it outside of the camera class, it's fine. Everybody's gonna do it a little bit different. However, I'm gonna do it inside of the camera class. So let's discard this and then say class camera, and then we'll say def init self. So that's a good foundation and now we can add in anything we need. So the very first thing is we're going to take the serial number, which I'm just imagining it's something like ABC123, just a simple string. So, so serial number. Next up we need a position, position, and then lastly a camera type camera underscore type. And then we will assign this to the attributes for the object. So self dot serial number, we're going to assign it serial number. Self dot position, we're going to assign it position. And notice that even though position is a class here, we don't have to worry about that here because of the typing with Python, position could contain anything. So if you really need to be safe, you can do type checking, but we're just not gonna worry about that right now. The main thing is, we just assign position to this position attribute. And then lastly, we just say self camera type and assign that camera type. Now next up, logical thing is to create that enum so we can assign an appropriate value. You could use an integer or a string or whatever you prefer. However, I like to use enums. So up at the top, I'm going to say import enum from enum with a capital E there. And then down here within the camera class, so stay indented one, we're going to say class camera type and inside of parentheses, we're gonna put enum with a capital E. Now the only thing in here, we have to put the options and assign them some integer value. So we'll go with PTZ, which stands for pan, tilt, zoom. It's a camera that can move around and point at things. And we'll assign that zero. Then we're gonna do EPTZ, which is a little bit different. That's like a camera that just gets a really wide field of view and you can digitally zoom in and move around but the camera itself doesn't actually move. And then a third option is stationary. And these are just kind of cameras that point and record. That's pretty much it. Now again, just to remind you guys, you may see these with capital letters, or you might see them start with one or some other integer. It doesn't really matter in our scenario. This is perfectly fine. Now let's go about logging this camera. I'm gonna define that above the camera type. So we'll say def log and put self in there. And then all we're gonna do is we're just going to print to the console. What are we gonna print? Mainly the serial number and the camera type. We can actually use this log method to get all of the position data. So we don't have to repeat our code. So first let's do the serial number, self dot serial number. And because I'm assuming this is a string here, I'm not going to do any kind of type conversion to string. Then next I will do the camera type by saying self dot camera type. And this is going to need converted to a string. So I'm going to say stir. And then after this print, we can just invoke this log method. And the way to do that is you would say self.position.log. Now again, later on, we are going to override a method to allow us to get a nice string representation for our objects. But for now, this log method is perfect. All right, so let's try it out, see if we got any errors. So we're gonna create a camera and this is gonna require a serial number. It's going to require a position, so you can actually create a position in line here. We'll just pass in 10, 11, and 12. 
And then the last thing in here is the camera type. So we can say camera dot camera type. And we want to go with the capital letter one because that refers to the enum. So grab that and then dot and we'll just say EPTZ. So that's all the data passed in. And then we can say C dot log. So I'll be amazed if I got all this right without any errors, but let's find out. Okay, I just got this backwards. So at the very top, we have to say from enum import enum with a capital E. Running it now, let's see what we get. We get abc123 camera.eptz and 10, 11, 12. So that is the solution to the challenge. Hopefully you're able to figure everything out and I'll zoom out for you guys to see all of the code if you need to make sure yours is the same. Thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for the next video because we are going to continue building upon what we have here.